This is gonna be my first time ever actually running this. I'm gonna put on the 3D goggles and I'm on the ground and I'm crawling into the machine. All of your engineers, I can hear them chuckling. All right, well, we can't do anything normal, and today we're gonna to be testing a Toro Multiforce. And of course, we're not gonna be doing that the normal way either. But before we test it, we gotta go get it. So if you're wondering what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be taking a Toro Multiforce with a five foot blade and putting it against a pickup truck plowing a driveway. Now this wasn't my original idea, I'm not going to take credit for it. The idea actually came from a friend of mine, his name is Brian from Ring Lawn Care out of Stillwater, Minnesota. It started a couple years ago. Him and I were having a conversation and he had bought a Toro Multiforce and he said, you know, my Toro Multiforce can plow two and a half driveways as fast as my pickup truck can plow one. And I'm like, what? He's like, yep. He says, it's just fast, it's maneuverable and we can put them head to head and I'll, I'll beat a pickup truck. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna see if that guy was lying. We're gonna see if Brian from Ring Lawn Care was telling me the truth or if he was exaggerating. And if you're wondering what shovel I'm using, it's called the man plow. My man card just got a little bit fatter from using this shovel. I don't know why Frankie doesn't use this more often. You know the guys from this company sent me that and I give it to Frankie. And he still goes to Walmart and he still buys the $8 plastic shovels and he wears them out. Actually, let's go look at one of, one of his shovels. But where's the Frankie shovel? Oh, here we go. How's this? War all the way down. They don't last very long, but he loves them. So what's your favorite shovel? Do you guys use something like this man plow? Or do you guys just use the $8 Walmart shovels like Frankie likes? All right, let's head to Toro right now to go pick up the multi-force. Mike. Mike, how you doing, man? Good. It's Mike Jagger, yep. right? Like yeah. Mick Jagger, but Mike Jagger. Yeah, that's right. Okay, perfect. Now you are the lead development engineer, if I understand that correctly. Yeah. Am I saying that right, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm the lead development engineer on the grandstand here. 
So that means you basically designed this bad boy from the ground up. Yeah, I first joined the Grandstand team in 2015. Okay. And I've been working with them ever since, so it's been a long time doing a lot of Grandstand work and developing the Grandstand, the multi-force, and all of the attachments. Perfect, so you're the perfect guy to walk us through exactly how this works then. Yeah. Okay, so now this is a tool carrier. That's what I call these things, Mike. Is that a correct assumption or accurate description of these? I, I like to call it a multi-purpose, multi-function machine. Okay. Uh, you get all season usage out of uh, what would typically be just the lawnmower. You have all season usage now. What are the major attachments? So we have the uh, plow that you have seen here. So this is one of the major ones? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then we have a Proforce turbine blower. So okay. a giant leaf blower, if you would. Okay. Um, and then we have a snow blower. Blower. I seen that came out two years ago. Yep. yep. And then we have a snow broom. Okay. Um, and then another attachment that I'd like to mention is our mulch bucket, our mulch force attachment. That's so like that's, a big dumper on the front, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. You didn't say one of the major attachments was the mower. You didn't uh, even mention that. So, but well, this is a mower, right? Yes. Yes. It, it, it's not an attachment because that's the standard configuration that's how you buy it and that's it comes with the mowing deck so okay uh, yeah it is a mower um, and actually another ma major attachment that i didn't mention is the bagger attachment for the mower so you can get a twin bagger for a side mounted bagger okay um and that's a patented bagger option that we have so wheel weights now is that always on or is that on for this snow plow attachment so we configured the snow plow with the snow tires and the wheel weights oh so it's um, got separate tires yeah specifically and, for okay yeah that, that's recommended for the snow application you get a lot better plowing traction and capability with these snow tires um, the turf tires are much better for cutting in grass uh, you don't have turf tear that way but the turf the snow tires that are a little bit softer rubber and more aggressive treads and it really gives you a lot of traction so um, traction actually is very good with this machine when we have can we stuff. can we bring it inside Mike that way if there's any wind I can hear you a little better is that okay or no um, unfortunately we can't bring it inside yet today okay it's the yeah the Z one you've shown that Okay. All right. I guess yeah, we can bring it. We in. can bring it in. Okay. Let's do, let's do that. I'll uh, I'll let these guys carry it in with you, and I will. Uh... What are we looking so, at? So uh, Jared, our marketing guy, he's the guy who I can have just quick hook up this plow if need be. So I just drop that pin there, quick unplug the hydraulics and do this pin. And then if I... Okay, so you drop that in 30 seconds. Is this, is this just for the snow plow or is this coupler work for other tools and attachments as well? So that also works for the broom. Okay. Um, it does not work with the snow blower. Uh, snow blower frame is a little bit heavier, um, so it doesn't work out there. But the uh, broom and the snow plow both use that quick coupler. In another 30 seconds, hook it right back up. So that's pretty easy to hook the snow plow on and off, but no, you said if you want to go from the plow to the blower, you probably got a 20 minute conversion time if you put, if you take the high flow kit off in the winter time, right? The high flow kit install, first you're going to want to install the brackets on those. If you already have those on, then the high flow slides on and off pretty quickly. Okay. And that, but the snow blower, you actually have to take out this 
res this uh, quick attach piece. Mm -hmm. And so that's a pin connection there. Okay. And then you actually need to bolt up the frame to where your deck push strut would normally be on the cell blower. So there's a couple of bolt connections that you need to hook up the cell blower. Looks like this is a boss snowplow and this is a five foot straight blade, but you've got bolt on wings put on it. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. And that is an available attachment for the five foot plow. So you actually have six feet of length here. There is an option for a four foot plow as well. If you're in tighter spaces. Sidewalks, um, right? This works just like a standard grandstand. Yep, pretty much. All the controls are the same. You put your parking brake on, turn your key. Um, you have controls right here for your hydraulics. So just lift, lower and tilt. So these are your plow controls yeah. right here. And those are hydraulically powered by the transmission. Okay. Um, so when you have the hydraulics, you have the hydraulic flow going from the transmission to this manifold block here. Mm -hmm. And then your controls here operate some solenoids that run the flow out to your lift cylinder and your auxiliary attachment. In this case, it's the tilt for the plow. Um, you can also do the rotation of the Proforce blower with that. Um, and is there any set, so each one of the attachments may or may not, excuse me, have separate controllers for it as well, right? This is the universal one that comes with the machine that will plow most of them, or run so, most of them, but there's a few that don't run off from this. So the high flow hydraulics is driven by the PTO clutch. Okay. So all your controls don't change with any of the attachments. This is your control setup and you have your hydraulic functionality for your lift lower and your tilt and then your PTO clutch engages the motors for the snow blower and the broom. I guess I didn't mention there is a light kit here as well. No, um, this is an optional light kit? Yep, this is an optional light kit. Okay. Uh, you just have a button at the operator's platform. You have the lights. Uh, I believe we have about 500 lumens each for these lights. And then you have flashes on the side. The flashes are sold separately but uh, very useful plowing situations, driving around in kind of dimly lit areas. And now you're an engineer, so you probably don't know it, but do you happen to know what the price of this setup would go for? Uh, I unfortunately do not know what the price <laughs> they of this setup never, is. never, do they ever, do they ever know? This is gonna be my first time ever actually running this machine, so. Okay. No start when the parking brake is off. Right, so we're dead in the water. Pull this up. Now we're live. Yep. Live action. Yep. Okay. So, so inside Toro, you can put on a set of goggles and you can crawl into the machine. Yep. Um, yeah, so actually at the time we developed with this, we didn't actually have that yet. So we didn't do that with this particular version, but there's other attachments that we've come out since that we've done it with. So when the, when the TRX, the big giant dingo, the monster dingo they had came out, they brought me into the room and I put on the 3D goggles and I'm on the ground and I'm crawling and I'm inside of then all of your engineers, I can hear them chuckling because I'm actually inside of the machine and I'm looking at how all the gears and components and how everything configured together. And it was just like actually being there and going into the machine. And it was yeah. amazing. It was so cool doing that. Yeah, um, it's know, similar to like, if you were to just say this were a hologram and walk through it and see everything. Yep, that's what it was. That's what it was. It was 3D virtual, pretty cool. All right, well, let's load this up and uh, I'll take it down the road. Sound like a plan? Yeah, sounds great. All right, thanks, Mike. Appreciate yeah, thanks, it, dude. Sam. All Enjoy. right. All right.
No way I'm getting in front of behind Alex at all. pushing the snow out of his driveway. Stands right behind him. better yeah but look at right here is bad and i still have this corner after that so i want a rematch <laughs>
little bit more practice and a little bit more time on it, you can get really proficient with this machine. Yeah, easily. And then it also depends on your situation. If you're on gravel or stuff, you can put the tire studs in or chains on or whatnot and get even more traction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Well, I hope you're able to uh, enjoy this ride today. And uh, if videos like this help you out, you know it helps me out, hitting that thumbs up button and uh, let me know what you think down below. You think this thing, uh, how this thing performed? Let me know if you thought this performed as you expected or did you expect it to do better or worse? What did you guys expect? I think this thing's performed better than I expected. I, I expected it to probably be, it, it move some snow but not get very good traction, just kind of like a gimmick, like, oh, we're gonna slap a plow on the front of it sell it or whatever like some companies do yeah well, but i think that with the down pressure of it being able to put all the weight of the whole machine on the front of the plow that helps out a lot and i out. was surprised at how good the traction was i didn't expect it to do this good are i, those, I thought it was going to be a snow slippery. tires on there yeah dude they switch they put snow tires on and they put on wheel weights so that's the Toro Multiforce with the snowplow. And uh, that's our video for tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed it. God bless you guys. Go get them. And we'll see you on another one. Catch you guys later.